In my time, I've stumbled into some classic games, both world-renowned and mostly forgotten. Sometimes even franchise names that may be well-known, but titles which sit in the shadows of the more successful game. So, I've been going through my collection the past few weeks looking for games that I feel uh, most people might pass up or maybe don't even know that they exist despite the fact that they are really worth a go. Um, I've got a total of 11 games to talk about because I love to go above and beyond, so uh, let's, let's get into it. Here's 11 games that you definitely need to play. Alright, first off is War of the Monsters, which is a Toho-inspired giant monster fighting game. Hell yeah. I've done my best to cover a wide range of different genres in this video, but I wanted to start off with this one because of my childhood best friend Aiden, who introduced me to this game back in the day. It's definitely not the sort of game that I would have looked twice at prior to experiencing it, as I'm not super big on fighting games. I mean, I really do enjoy them, but I simply don't have the patience for mastery. War of the Monsters really sells itself as easy to pick up and play, with devastating combos, crazy killer moves, and some of the most lush and destructive environments of the PS2 era. I mean, look at all this carnage! You can knock down buildings and pick up objects to whack and attack with. There are even stage hazards to mix things up, and with a solid roster of iconic knockoff monsters, this is such a fun time, especially with friends. There is also a campaign mode to go through as well, with some even bigger bosses, though holy shit, this is one difficult game. I can't say I've ever made it very far, but the enjoyment from this one really comes from that couch multiplayer experience. Is your friend a dick? Well, kick him in the dick with a giant titan and see how he feels. And if you like the look of that, then I've got another retro monster game for you. It's called The Unholy War on PlayStation 1. This was another one shown to me by Aiden, the bastard. <laughs> it's not the last time we'll hear from him in this video either. But yeah, Unholy War pits a race of mechanical spacemen against the native inhabitants of a faraway planet. Arenas are smaller but offer a faster paced fight in this battle to the death until only one team is left standing. It's a lot of fun for what it is, and surprisingly, I even find myself enjoying the strategy gameplay in the single player mode, even though I'm not really one for these type of simulated combat experiences. It's normally just not my thing. But I mean, <laughs> just look how happy he is! This is my face when I remember that these games exist and go on a wild nostalgia trip down memory lane. And I mean, shit, if you want to dive even further into the big monster strategy department, then take a look at impossible creatures. You build up your army of combined critters and take to battle. Hell yeah. Man, I could go on and on about this one, but for real, I wasn't even planning to include this as one of my 11 games, so shit, we'd better move on. <laughs> Okay, let's talk racing games. It's no secret that I'm not a fan of the simulation crap. I'm much more of a destruction derby, burnout, or dirt type of guy. I love gritty arcade action and chaos in my racing games, so Split Second is one that I can highly recommend. This is a game that I briefly mentioned in my Destruction Derby retrospective from last year, which I was playing in the background while making that video, and I would actually go on to finish it 100%, which, trust me, is no easy feat. These races provide some steep competition on the track, and even the track itself is out to get you with some of the most batshit insane level hazards that I think I've ever seen in a game. Collapsing buildings, train crashes, planes falling from the sky, and all manner of infrastructure crumbling away to reveal alternative routes and killer roadblocks if you time your attacks just right. It's madness, and even with a perfect race under your belt, you will only be winning by the skin of your teeth. But the challenge is definitely one that you can overcome, making this lesser known gem from BlackRock and Disney Interactive Studios of all places well worth checking out. I can't speak more highly of this game. 
Motor Storm Apocalypse has a similar thing going on, but if you're still looking for a high adrenaline experience that's a little bit different, then allow me to introduce you to Pursuit Force on PlayStation Portable. Now, here is something else. You basically play as the stereotypical action movie cop, chasing down bad guys and jumping between vehicles to arrest them, not letting anything stand in your way, no matter the environment, and you know what? It's fucking awesome! Seriously, action movie cop the video game. What an incredible idea. The levels are structured sometimes with multiple segments taking you from freeways to river bends and through all of the different seasons catching bad guys and preventing the different criminal factions from warring. While it can be a bit basic and repetitive at times, I find it really makes up for this with the different set pieces and non-stop pace that it upholds. And I mean, the first time you jump out of the squad car to run around on foot arresting people as a standalone warrior of justice? Man, I was blown away. It's such a fun time. While also a bit steep in the difficulty department, more so than Split Second and War of the Monsters, it's still a great arcade driving and shooting game which was worthy of a sequel two years later. I haven't played that one myself, but hey, you should definitely try these out. The frame rate can be a bit unpredictable on physical PSP hardware, so go emulate it for the smoothest experience today. Okay, up next is a cute little title for all of you collectathon platformer fans, from the system known for excelling in the genre, and from the team who would go on to give us Sly Cooper, Infamous, and Ghost of Tsushima. I'm talking, of course, about Sucker Punch Productions' Rocket Robot on Wheels for the Nintendo 64, a debut game from the studio. Now, let's get a few things straight real quick. This ain't Mario 64 and it ain't Banjo-Kazooie, but I can definitely tell you what it is. It is worth your time trying this game. I mean, come on guys, get on it already. Now, I've already covered this game many years ago on the channel. Terrible video, do not watch it. Check out Nitro Rad's video instead. But just to give you a quick idea of what it's all about, you play as this little guy known as Rocket going through a carnival of different themed areas to re-establish order before the grand opening. It's got all that jumping around and grabbing stuff that your older brothers told you about, fun bouncy music and visuals, and a handful of different vehicles that you can operate, from remote race cars to heavy machinery and whatever the hell this thing is supposed to be. Now, is this a perfect game? No, but for what it's worth coming from me, who is an outsider to the N64 library of games, this was one of the first titles that I really, truly enjoyed on the system, and it's been lodged in my brain ever since. So, with the reignited love for these retro 3D throwbacks in recent years, I'd really like to see this one published on Steam, or the digital N64 marketplace for Switch, because it's such a great game that deserves to finally receive its accolades and respect. Okay, so for those of you too young to know what this is, this is Pitfall, the classic Atari 2600 game from Activision released way back in 1982. So now you're probably thinking, why are you recommending me a game that's beyond 40 years old from one of the most well-known franchises and developers in history? Well, the simple answer is that this is still an absolute banger, even after all of these years. And I bet that for those of you who have actually tried this at some point, that you most likely didn't give it a chance to prove itself. So that's why I'm including it today. Ultra retro gaming of this nature does still have a lot to offer, even in the age of PlayStation 5s, because many of the titles from this era are still represented in this day and age in arguably the largest gaming market around, mobile games. Yeah, most of these would not look out of place on your phone to kill some time while you're waiting for the bus, and that's pretty cool. But I understand that most of you aren't into that sort of thing, so Pitfall breaks that mould by offering a genuine adventure for the player to embark on, one of magnificent scale for its era. At first glance, you might just think, well, what's the point? 
All you do is run to the right, you jump over things, you maybe find some treasures, and after three hits, you're underground. But looking deeper into this, Pitfall offers such a modern experience for 1982, it's actually astonishing. The goal is you have 20 minutes to find all 32 treasures hidden within this jungle maze, filled with hazards and underground tunnels, but the only way that's possible to collect them all is by learning the terrain, studying the quickest paths available to you, and uncovering all of the secrets. It's a true exploration game. Now sure, you can walk to the right forever and maybe you'll eventually see all 255 screens in the game, but you still won't have all of the treasure, and definitely not within the steep time limit. So the best way I can describe this game is like planning for a speed run. You practice and strategize your route, learning what you need to do, and if you somehow manage to make it out with all of the treasures and all of your lives, then you honestly deserve a medal. It's an incredible game, no excuses for not giving it a proper try, and you don't need these old ass consoles either. It's had countless re-releases and ports. Hell, it's probably less than a megabyte, so go emulate that shit and see why the name Pitfall echoes respect throughout the gaming world. Alternatively, you could try out Pitfall 3D Beyond the Jungle, which is a far newer game in comparison coming out on the PlayStation 1. I haven't played much of this myself, but I have heard a lot of good things about it. However, my personal version of this type of game growing up was The Sims 2 Castaway on console. I never had the PC version, so I can't tell you much about that, but the premise of being stranded on an island, forced to explore, building your own shelters and hunting for food, scavenging for supplies, it was something really different growing up, unlike anything else that I'd ever played. Now, sure, these days you've got Ark and countless other survival type games, but I think it's the charming personality of The Sims, with its fun cartoonish nature, which can still hook me into this game, even after all the years I've spent playing it. Hell, I'm a sucker for The Sims in general, but this isn't really like that. This beast is something entirely fresh. I love exploring all the different caves and stumbling into secrets on the map, expanding my knowledge of the terrain and learning the mysterious stories across each of the islands. Even if you're not really a Sims player, I would still suggest giving this one a go if you're into survival games and exploration because there is so much to discover in this perfect little package that even just booting it up to quickly get some footage for this video, I've been playing this thing for hours now and I can't stop. Please, send help! Of all of the Spider-Man games out there, friend or foe tends to fly under the radar, and while I'm sure plenty of people do know about this game, if you haven't played it first hand, then stop sitting on your hands, grab a friend and go beat up some baddies. Releasing right along with the final Sam Raimi film of the trilogy in 2007, it sees all of your favourite characters facing off and teaming up to defeat a common enemy invading the planet. The action is simple, yet satisfying, with brutal beat-em-up gameplay for you and a friend, and while it can be a lot of fun on your own, this is definitely one to play couch co-op, which really sets it apart from other Spider-Man titles out there but also getting to control and play such classic pop culture villains as well really seals the deal. Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Venom, Sandman, Rhino, and so many others expanding upon the movies into comic book lore, this is a game for true Spidey fans. And it may be simple and quite short as well, which makes it all the easier to jump in and have some fun, power up your characters and wreak some havoc across the variety of levels before it outstays its welcome. I wouldn't have known about this one if it wasn't for good old Aiden. Man, he loved this game, and I as well. It's highly addicting arcade madness, so if you've got a friend, then don't sleep on this one. Go out of your way to try it. Up next is a great PS1 shooter. You may have heard of it, especially if you've been around on this channel long enough. It's called Apocalypse by Neversoft, before they made the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game. 
problems. I've covered this in full on the channel before, so I won't go into a lot of detail as I recommend you check out that video, but the short version is that this is a gritty sci-fi shooter, and it does an incredible job at pulling you into the game world and delivering with the big gnarly battles. Starring Bruce Willis as Bruce Willis, we go up against demons from hell and the four horsemen of apocalypse, plague, war, beast, and death in some wild gunfights with futuristic weapons, dark moody levels, and a killer soundtrack featuring System of a Down and Poe. And yet even the original music here is so heavy that I can listen to it outside of playing the game. And it's fucking awesome. Definitely recommend this one, and you can beat it within an afternoon, so there are no excuses not to put this one on your to-do list. I've got another gritty sci-fi shooter to talk about. This time it's a first-person shooter, um, another game on the Nintendo 64 that really stuck with me once I played it. I would assume that many of you are aware of this game. Many have played it, and it's been given its fair share of praise over the years, but it sadly sits in the shadow of its younger brother. GoldenEye may be a lot of fun, but it doesn't even come close to Perfect Dark by Rare. Ever since I covered this on the channel years ago, this game has not escaped my mind for one moment. I genuinely think about it all of the time. Its big story beats, the otherworldly locations, the soundtrack hits a spot within my soul, and man, it was such a banger of a game. It's a shame that all of that potential was wasted on a garbage prequel, and that was the end of it. Disgusting. I'm still bitter about it to this day, but the original Perfect Dark still stands, in my opinion, as one of the greatest first-person shooters of all time. Really big Halo vibes off of this. It's got all the fun local multiplayer action that you love from GoldenEye, but it also has an actually incredible single-player mode to back it up, and this has been re-released several times, so it's readily available for you to try. I don't often gush so thoroughly over anything, so surely you must understand that this game really left an impact on me. Alright, well you guys know me, I'm not really a modern gamer. You know, I like to stick with my retro stuff and I never really stray too far away from my childhood systems. Um, but in this case, I wanted to finish the video off with a modern game, one from 2021 which I played and thoroughly enjoyed. Um, in fact, I'd go as far to say that it's one of my favourite modern games ever. Which is crazy, because I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this. Um, it's actually sort of entered meme status a bit. You know, most people take the piss out of it. Which is really such a shame, because I feel like that reputation has hurt this game in the public eye. And that really annoys me, because people need to take this game a lot more seriously. I'm of course talking about Deathloop. Man, I fucking loved this from start to finish. I really don't know why people don't take it seriously. Hitman is one of the biggest franchises in the industry, even breaking out of the medium for better or worse. Deathloop takes the stealth and strategic assassination gameplay from Hitman and turns it into a work of science fiction in a small town where every day repeats exactly the same. It's like Groundhog Day. You've always got the same targets, the same locations at your disposal, but the key is learning everybody's patterns based on the time of day and, you know, what other variables might come into play if you kill off one of the characters, how will that affect the other boss's routines? It makes you think, and I really like that. This is another game that feels like you're prepping for the perfect speed run the entire way through, spending all of your time studying environment layouts and planning for the perfect run to take out all eight targets within a single 24-hour loop in the hopes that you can break free. And it's all wrapped up in this super groovy retro aesthetic with some really strong dialogue on top of that and some very deep history at its core. But the thing is, you're not the only assassin out there. You're being hunted by a young girl who's trying to protect the very time loop you're trying to break apart. And with the wild mix of power-ups, different abilities, and environmental effects as you visit the same areas at different times of day, this really is such a unique experience. Is it perfect? No. But what I can say is that I really enjoyed my time with this one. 
so it makes me sad when people say that they just couldn't get into it. Please, just give it a chance. Once you wrap your head around the time travel and how the inventory system works, then it quickly becomes an intriguing blast full of puzzle solving, discovery, murder, and often failure. In fact, that's the name of the game, Try and Try Again. Death is the key on your mission to complete the perfect loop. I know it's easy to take the piss out of this one, but the end product is very solid and worth the time investment in my opinion. If you like games that require you to use a bit of brain power and puzzle solving, while still offering up all of that fun action that you'd expect from a first person shooter, then definitely check out Deathloop. It's one that you don't want to miss. So that's the video. 11 games that you must not sleep on, because if you do, then you're going to be seriously missing out, okay? Trust me, guys. You, you need to play Deathloop. It's really good. Hell, play all of these games, because you will not regret it. Anyway, I'd love to know some games that you guys think uh, need more attention. Drop a comment down below, follow with liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with your friends on social media. I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.